history with the Freeport County Historical Museum Library and Village. I'm Stephanie Kibler, Executive Director with Risha Lilienthal, Coordinator of Collections and Exhibits. Yeah. And this is, we were just saying, this is our first one in more than a month. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, we got the fair yep. out of the way and then everything sort of seemed to go to, what would be an old school term, hell in a handbag. A lot. Lots been happening. Um, one of the saddest things is our Discover History program was canceled by the school this year. And I know you think we're gonna say because of COVID, mm -hmm. but no, because of road construction, which has gone on for two years now. Yeah. Um, whew, anyway, enough about that. Um, we've just had a lot of shuffling we've been doing yeah. and a lot of exhibit stuff and a lot of some delays on some contracting things that needed blah blah blah. So anyway, <laughs> welcome back. Hi. Um, today we're featuring the Clover Club uh, and I, I'm going to just clarify right now. I'm working with new glasses, new prescription, so I'm kind of doing this kind of thing which is, so bear with me. Um, so the drink predates prohibition. It's a pre-prohibition mm -hmm. drink. Um, born, this is from an article I just read, amidst the oak paneling and leather armchairs at the Bellevue Stratford, Stratford Hotel in Philadelphia, which was founded in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. um, and in your head, can't you just see this big, beautiful oak panel? Leather. It's like nice men's lounge. Oh, golly. Beautiful leather chairs. Um, and it catered to um, lawyers, writers, and captains of industry. Mm -hmm. um, business moguls. Business moguls. Yeah. The drink itself is named for the men's club that met at the hotel. So the Clover Club was that gathering of lawyers, writers, and, and captains of industry. Um, I'm trying to remember what other drink did we do that was based on a club? Remember? Oh, goodness. And it was a club similar to this, but it had a female participant. Yeah. Which was unusual. I can't think of what the beverage mm -hmm. was. We'll have to rewatch. I <laughs> will uh, we'll have to rewatch. Go back. Run, rerun. Watch the reruns. Uh, the cocktail at the time was the cocktail to toast with. So it was considered not you know, champagne you toast with, right. but this was considered the toasting cocktail. Um, but by the early, early 20th century, it migrated beyond Philadelphia to uh, the Waldorf Astoria, the plaza. Uh, and it's been said that the Irish poet Yeats, 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 it's not Yeats, no, it's Yeats. Yeats. Yeah. All of a sudden in my head it was wrong. Um, it's said to have been a fan of the Clover Club. Oh, nice. um, the club or the drink? The drink, <laughs> the beverage, the cocktail. <laughs> By the 1930s, the Clover Club's reputation kind of started to dwindle a little bit. Esquire Magazine branded it as a drink for pansies. Wow. Um, and the Clover Club's gentlemanly sippers eventually turned to martinis uh, and a stiffer drink. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, they had noticed the female drinkers enjoyed the Clover Club. Mm -hmm. um, and the cousin, the pink, pink lady. lady. Yeah. Uh, so by which, that's what we made with Jenna. Yes, when we had the big me hand. We had the me hand, yep. And, and yep. that was the only other one we've used egg white with. Oh. Um, in 07, legendary drinks writer David Woodrich featured it in his column for Esquire. Oh, again. <laughs> which we then saw a resurgence of the Clover Club. Is that kind of like poetic justice? That's kind of, kind of like poetic justice. <laughs> I'm going to guess that is poetic justice. Um, and in 2009, legendary bartender Julie Reiner, um, Flat Iron Lounge, and Pago Club took notice and gave a contemporary makeover to the beverage. And she even named her Brooklyn Bar, the Clover Club. Aww. Which I've, I've seen, I want to say a documentary on her on the bar, the Clover Club. Okay. And I thought, oh, that's a cute bar name. I didn't realize it came from a drink. 
Uh, recipes published for this beverage started in this, or, or show up as early as 1917. Um, and some of them, not some of them, initially it also called for French vermouth, which today you could either use a dry or a sweet vermouth. Mm -hmm. Uh, but today's recipes don't use vermouth. Oh, okay, I had that flip. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we're not going to use mm. the vermouth. Um, yeah, but if you want to, you can. You can absolutely. Um, so one of the so the, the, it appeared in the Ideal Bartender in 1917, which is a bartender recipe book, and also in Mrs. Norton's cookbook, selecting, cooking, and serving for the home table. Okay, I thought that. Go, go, Mrs. Norton, mm -hmm. and the little clover club right. recipe in your cookbook. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> let's mix one. Yeah, and see how we see if we think it's the toasting drink. If you think it's the bee's knees, if it's the bee's knees. But if it beats champagne. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna add gin, lemon juice, and the raspberry syrup and egg white into the shaker. So two ounces of gin per. Really, so we're doing four, four ounces. ounces. Of gin. Okay. Is it gonna be too much? Ooh. Didn't you say we were mixing one and then? I think we're gonna do half? two. We're gonna, okay. Let's try to do. Let's see how okay. much. Let's see what that looks like. Let's see like. how it tastes. Oh, you thinking it's gonna be too much for the shaker? That's what I was worried about. Oh. I don't think so though, because then it's just a little. And then it's going to be. Um, so one ounce of lemon juice would be half an ounce per beverage, but one... <laughs> it's been a while I had to do one like that. <laughs> I'm done. We haven't done that for a while. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. So one. One, it would normally be a half an ounce, but we're, so one ounce, because we're doing two. And then one ounce of raspberry syrup, which we made, by the way, um, and we'll put oh, that maybe. we'll put that on the um, when we do the this. Description. And then it's one egg white. Let's see if I can... oh. Did you do it? It's so pretty. It's very pretty. One egg white. Oh, the whole thing. The whole thing. Okay. Where did I lost my? Um, shake vigorously. Ooh. Oh, looks like cherry seven up. Add some vigor. Drained into. This says chilled cocktail glass. We did not chill ours, so I'm gonna cut the glass. Not as frothy as I would have anticipated. Should have a little more froth, I would have thought. Maybe that comes more. Kind of looks like it, doesn't it? And then we're just going to garnish with some raspberry. And I'm just going to plop them in. Oh, okay. I don't know. That works. If, if, if we had longer ones, I would do that. Uh, right? Well, you try that. Oh. <laughs> Gravity didn't like me. Wasn't going to help her out there with that one. <laughs> Yes, so <laughs> betrayed by gravity. That, um, oh, that sounds like a romance novel or a murder mystery. Betrayed, betrayed, by, gravity. betrayed by gravity. It could be set at <laughs> the Clover Club. Oh, go. no, better yet, it could be set at, wait, oh, God, these glasses, at the Bellevue Stratford Hotel. Oh, right, where they met. With oak paneling and leather armchairs. And you can just feel that smoky kind of Yeah, like, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. 
Somebody get on that. <laughs> do we want to try it? We do want to try it. Okay. okay, so cheers. I want to smell it. Ooh, it smells really ginny. I'm surprised. I thought Ooh, that raspberry would. Oh. No, I'm not oh, a gin lemon. lover, but that's really nice. Oh, ooh, the raspberry kicks after uh -huh. the lemon. Ooh, that's nice. That's really nice. Like, yeah. And I can, I, I have, oh, okay, what do I want to start with first here? I, I don't know. Do you want to go with me, Han, or why this went out of popularity? Let's go with why this went out of popularity. Okay. So, you know, you would kind of think maybe because it's a little sweeter, so they were like, we're men, we're going to go to hard drinks. Well, that's kind of what it's implied. It's a little bit, but it's also because originally, Pink was a manly color. Interesting. And then in like the 30s, a little bit earlier, that's when it kind of shifted away from being manly and into being more womanly. So about 2007 and 8 is when pink became the new black. Oh. Which is when pink cocktails then. Oh, then came back in. Sure. So do you think that's. That's probably why too. But. Pink, you know, it was it was kind of coming off of red, which was considered aggressive, and so it was in that family. Mm. But it was also the color of meat, color of flesh, so it was like this is a manly color, and women were more likely to be associated with blue because it was calmer, and it was um, yeah, more, more interesting, calmer and more demure, I guess. Yeah, interesting. So, but then also, as we had mentioned, the pink lady mm -hmm. came. And, and women were liking the pink lady. The pink lady was pink, and so they were like, all right, you women, take that. I think I like this better than the pink lady. Mm. I liked the pink lady. I don't know, because they are similar. They're similar, but I, this I one like I like. I like the raspberry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I like that little bit of tart and sweet. Mm hmm And I definitely agree, make your own raspberry syrup was super simple. Took 10 minutes. Yeah. You didn't. You didn't. You don't need a pan. Uh, a lot of recipes tell you to use a pan, but oh. this one, uh, the bartender uh, that gave advice on this said use um, the fruit, the sugar, and cold water. Muddle that and add a little more water oh. just to, to get the sugar melted. Okay. I think that was much better. Yeah. Much better than the wait, wait, wait. Than the store bought sweet syrups. They um, tend to leave an aftertaste, is, is what this bartender had said. Oh, okay. I would agree with that. Sorry, sure. sidetracked. I love oh. this, pink and blue. Yeah, that was that was pretty much what I had on it, I think. Um, oh. Yeah, I even have a little bit of quotation to kind of give a background to this. Because if you read The Great Gatsby. Who hasn't read The Great Gatsby? I didn't like it. I'm sorry. Really? But I really didn't like it. Oh, I really did like um, it. But I didn't Gatsby, like the movie. The new one? Mm -hmm. No, with mm -hmm. the rap music and stuff mm -hmm. in it. Oh, mm -hmm. That just took me out of it. But anyway, <laughs> um, Gatsby proudly sported a pink suit in the novel. Oh he yes, yes, yes. Suit. And that's manly men, such as the poet Yates. Yates slurped them down without shame. Slurped? I don't believe you. Yeah. I don't believe Yates <laughs> slurped. But. Um, yeah, it fell out of favor with men. Yeah, no, it's, it's saying all the things I said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're getting a movie review, a cocktail, the history of the cocktail, and confusion. Here we go. Welcome to our last our two world. weeks, folks. Oh my gosh. So um, you tied Meehan, Judge Meehan, yes, into this. Because Judge Meehan was also a lawyer. You know, he. Oh, sure. Warrior into being a judge. Um, and he was in the 1911 history of Freeborn County. This is a quote. He was recognized as one of the able attorneys of the state and one of the most prudent, studious, and careful lawyers to be found anywhere. And as a counselor, his opinions are regarded as safe, sound, and reliable wherever he is known. So he was a good lawyer. So that's that's that really is what led him then to become a judge. Yes, that, to be that, that respect, good, that honorable. Had. Yeah. Um, his first name is John. Yes. What does the FD stand for? I still for? have to find that out. I have to ask Linda because okay. I feel like we asked her one time and I don't remember. I, I, like you had said, is it initials or is it actually like? And in my head, I think I think it's just initials. It might be. 
but you know if you give somebody initials there's got to be a reason yeah yeah i don't know no i don't know but um yeah mehan's pretty big i guess we have quite a few of his items a lot because his wife Catherine Meehan was very prominent in the area and she also was very prominent here at the yes. museum itself and the society. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, in fact, one of the things we're finishing up is the, the um, Meehan Law Office yeah. um, exhibit. Right. Which is, is um, rustic. Uh, not rustic. What do I want to say? Simple. 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 Urban, Ur maybe. But it feels so warm. Which I feel like at him as a lawyer, yeah. like in that honorable way, kind right. of represents him well. Yeah. It's got it's, a roll top desk and then he has, has his roll top yes, desk. Yes, his yeah. roll top desk. And we have um, books from uh, TV Natwold is in there, a lot mm -hmm. of his books. He was another lawyer here mm -hmm. in Freeborn County. Um, and it will feature the life-size portrait, almost uh, life-size portrait of Catherine, Catherine Meehan, Meehan, which was commissioned as a oh, wedding gift, is that maybe, the, maybe. there are okay. three different possibilities? Okay. Two of them are two different ransom women who might have painted it, mm -hmm. um, and then the third one is that Alexander Grin Grinder. Yes, yes, who is a Minneapolis artist, but also has done a lot here and, and is recognized recognized internationally. Yep, yep. Um, I had a question I was going to ask about Catherine, and it just flew mm. right out of my brain. Um, those books that we have in there, that are TV Natholds, so the other lawyer, he was, um, that same book, quote, saying that he was engaged in the practice of his profession in the city of Albert Lee and enjoys the respect and confidence of everyone. Oh, that's so they really were both, nice. Very well respected yeah, also. Very well respected. Um, we are trying to get some of um, John Meehan's diaries yes. um, and the few pieces we have. There are some really fun Gosh. entries. He, he, he sounds fascinating. Yeah, and, yeah. and kind and yes. um, studious. studious and, and um, love the community. Mm -hmm. Very able to, mm -hmm. you know. Um, he, his interests were travel, photography, and writing. So I, I could see that. Like two of those, well, yes, two of his personality fit that Clover Club, Clover Club, Clover, Clover Club, Clover Club, Clover Club. Um, which, you know, he's a lawyer, so lawyers mm -hmm. were in there, but then also writers. Sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah, he would have probably been right at home. Oh, yeah. He would have probably loved it. Mm -hmm. That's he a, probably that's would a, have supported this happily. Probably. Too. That's a good connection because I sat at my desk and um, we're trying to. <laughs> to pull you know, something. usually when we do this, that like, you can pull something yeah. from within the museum or something. In Clover Club, there was hmm. not a for me. Sure. But it's been that kind of day. Um, and since I talked about The Great Gatsby, I kind of have a, a couple of um, 1920s slang. I thought you were going to dance or something. You know, I'm, like, ready I'm, to, I'm feeling it. Like, hey, I start doing the Give Charleston. me the slang. I love okay. the slang. All right. So, a criminal lawyer was called a lip. A lip? A lip. Is that because he spoke for the criminal? I think so. But see, lawyers in the 1920s had a lot of like mouth associated slang with them, probably because they talked a lot in mm -hmm. court, you know? They were the mouthpiece. Yeah. Um, a, a prison sentence was called a bit. A bit. A bit. The jail. Huh. Um, oh, prison was a jail or a camp. A can going yeah. to the can. Mm -hmm. That's not what that means today, <laughs> right? <laughs> different. Sorry. Um, there's a few different uh, like slang for lawyer, and a lot of them again have to do with the lip. So um, a mouthpiece okay. was a lawyer. That makes sense. Uh, swell mouth was a first class lawyer. So Ooh. if you got a first class lawyer, oh, you got that swell you, mouth you, representing you. Got you got yourself a swell mouth. <laughs> yeah. Um, a cheap lawyer was a spieler. A spieler? Mm hmm Spieler. I don't know why I went to spelunking. <laughs> I went to kind that of... That would be called popcorning. Right? <laughs> I went to um, spielen in German, which is play. 
So I don't know if he's stealing. Like, he's he was a player. A play love and spelunker. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, a shyster. Oh yes, you yeah. bet. So there was really there are people today who believe every attorney is, is a shyster. Right. Yeah. But that one came about like 1890. Interesting. Went through the 20s. Well, and now again today we mm -hmm. still hear that. Um, and then I was thinking about how he likes to travel and trains were called rattlers. Oh, I like that. Yeah. And then he was also a typewriter and a typewriter. He was a T. What? He wasn't a typewriter. <laughs> he was just a writer. <laughs> Did he have a type he liked to write? <laughs> but <laughs> the object, a typewriter was called a mill. A mill. What? I guess because it it yeah. produced it. Maybe. Put out? Yeah, that could be. Huh. Typewriter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you talked about the rattlers. Mm -hmm. I like that for a train. Um, this is totally off topic. Oh. But um, over the last couple of days have discovered we've got a wood train that's about yay. Three pieces look like that. Long. Tallest piece about that high that was donated by George's Denzine, mm -hmm. who was a avid train collector, collector yeah. here in, in Fremont yeah. County. And um, his grandfather made this for him. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, in the early 1900s. And we have a picture of George's, and his name is George's. There's a story behind that. You'll have to come and see our exhibit oh, when it goes in and find out. Um, but a picture of him, he must be about three years old, he's four so, years he's old. He's adorable. The train is probably longer than he is tall. Oh, yeah. But he's got like that like two-piece, like almost oh. sailory kind of looking. Oh, it's adorable. So it was really a fun discovery to yeah. find and piece together here. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, totally off topic, but really fun. That's what makes working here fun. Mm -hmm. Find those when little, you find little stories. And, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I've got nothing more. Do you have anything else? This was kind of a. We'll be. We'll be. We'll get back into we'll the get rotation. Back into the <laughs> flow with our next one. I, and stop calling people typewriters. And, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's been one of those. It's just been. It's been a long couple weeks, folks. Um, so cheers. cheers.